Hi everybody, thanks for joining me for this week's question and answer video. My name is David and I'm a life coach and I make these question and answer videos every single week. I'm hoping to help you guys heal and recover from your trauma. I encourage all of you to please ask questions. Ask me anything you want about your experiences, about your abuser, um, how to get better, things like this. Share your experiences down below. I keep this as a very safe community for all of you. Um, today I'm answering questions from last week's question and answer video. I do this every single Monday. So any questions you have, go to the very latest question and answer video. Go down in the comment section. Ask me. Tune in next Monday for your answer. Thank you very much. Uh, as a lot of you know, I've started a petition a couple weeks ago. And it's to stop uh, narcissistic online bullying. I'll have the uh, link down below for you guys to follow. And I encourage all of you to please sign if you could. Thank you very much. It's brand new. It's starting slow. This is something I'm learning that a lot of people, most people, are completely unaware of. They're unaware. I mean, they know it happens, but they just don't understand the damage that it causes unless it directly affects them. That's what I'm learning. So I've made this a lifelong mission of mine forever to stop this stuff. Um, I've been a victim of it for many years, still am. I'm sick of it, I'm tired of it, and I hope that all of you will join in this fight to stop this stuff. Stop online bullying and attacking people. It's causing thousands of people to take their own lives every year, so it's really horrendous. Uh, link will be down below. It's change.org forward slash stop bullies. Thank you very much. So I like to recommend something every single week to you guys. This week I have another supplement. So there's something called anandamide. Anandamide. That's probably how you say it. Anandamide. Anandamide, also known as something very longer, much longer and harder to say, is a fatty acid neurotransmitter. It was the first to be discovered, first endocannabinoid to be discovered. The name anandamide, 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 <laughs> sorry, I don't know how to say it, is taken from the Sanskrit word ananda, which means joy, bliss, and delight. So what I did is I saw, I went to go see if this chemical is for sale. And anaden, anandatol, anandatol is a high saponin content contributes to anandamide's anti-anxiety effects. If you suffer from anxiety, fear, pain, moodiness, depression, stress, insomnia, or simply a mind that never shuts up. That's all of you guys, huh? Then your experience of yourself and the world certainly won't be a happy one. I found this stuff for sale on Amazon. The only one I could find actually anywhere was this one brand called Neurobalance with Anandanol. <laughs> it's expensive. It's $45 for... 120 capsules. It's a lot. So it'll last you a long time. Um, go look this up yourself. Go look up the chemicals. See what exactly it does. I don't want to dive all into the what it does to our brains and stuff. But there's a lot of reviews that says it, it helps. It helps with people like us suffering from all of that. Anxiety, fear, depression, uh, rumination, um, a just bad mood, right? A lot of us suffer from stress disorders. So it seems like this st stuff might be pretty good. Any of you know anything about it, let me know. Any of you decide to take it, let me know what you think. Thank you very much. The link will be down below in the description box to Amazon. Neural balance with anandol. Anandanol. <laughs> anandanol. All right, let's get into the questions. There's lots of them. So I try not to make these videos too long. So I try. sometimes I hurry through them. I'll try not to do that. But I don't want the video to be so long. Traveling man from Louisiana. Hi, traveling man. Uh, I hope you're well. I guess my concern is going to someone new. I'd have to open. So, so traveling man has had some concerns and worries about starting a, with a new therapist. You know, you build a relationship with the therapist. You tell them everything. They know everything, and you're afraid to start over. And I get that. Um, your reasons for fearing to start over is you don't want to open up these traumas again. And, and to me, that just, it sounds like it means you're not healed from them. So that makes me question your therapist currently and if they're really helping you. Um, so it could benefit you to go to a new one. Um, we have to, you know, we have to get the help we need. I'm doing this like a chart. This is 100% progress, right? Every day, every day, every day. Maybe your therapist is only doing a, not quite as good. Right? It can actually cause damage. To not re want to revisit old traumas, you don't have to, but that's the point of getting better. So that your past experiences aren't traumatic anymore. 
they were only traumatic then. And there's no more traumatic emotions affiliated or tied to these experiences. And that's the point of healing. Okay. So um, do what you want. Um, I would still encourage you to keep looking around if you feel like you're not getting better. A lot of the concerns you have that you've brought up in the past couple weeks really shows that, that we're not making the progress that we can. The progress that I see in my own clients. Uh, Tara, Niagara, Canada. Oh, and yeah, please leave your locations, guys. Stop in and tell us where you're from. Thank you. My therapist actually recommended mushrooms. And when I voiced concern due to family addiction, he suggested cannabis edibles with close friends as when I smoked it. I had panic attacks and the oil tastes gross. The edible was great. I fully relaxed for the first time in years and my thoughts and brain calmed almost completely. Additionally, my knee pain eased and I had the most solid sleep without a single nightmare. That's great. Um, you know, not, not really any side effects. It's not dependent. That's great. But man, I've studied this stuff a lot, okay? I've tried different drugs in my 20s. I'm not anti-drugs at all, not even medicinal pharmaceutical. We need them. We need them. I, I don't think there's anybody out there suffering from trauma that needs LSD, that needs to hallucinate. Yeah. Trauma means damage to our brain. It means it was too traumatic for us to handle. Okay. That was our reaction, our experience. And our brain is damaged, period. There is damage to our brains. We need to rest. We need to be calm. We need to take care of ourselves. LSD isn't for that. And I understand people's reasoning for doing that. I totally get it. I've had CPTSD for 40 years. And like I said, I've, I've, I've eaten mushrooms freaking 20 years ago, 30 years ago. I get it. That's not the answer. I, I can't stress it enough. And I've known a lot of people have tried and backed that up. That's not the answer. We're too unstable right now to be hallucinating. Oh man, I, I think it's an awful suggestion. I can't believe your therapist recommended it. I, re I really can't. That's uh, to me. I think that's just awful, uh, awful. But be careful of the uh, help you get. Dave, this is Big Dave, pissed off in Tennessee. I pissed off, Big Dave. My sister somehow got hooked into a relationship with one of these narcissist sociopath SOBs. I got a ton of questions, but I think I need to try and understand this first. I think. All my sis goes on and on about is how he always talked about accountability and the importance of fairness. But when this dude split, the coward texted her vile and nasty, pathetic goodbye and then just cut her off. He would not answer her calls, texts, or mails, whatever. My question is, do these people know or are they even aware of the hypocritical actions on their part? And are they aware? I really mean aware of how effing wrong that it is. So just text or even say horrible crap and then not even give my sister a chance to speak her mind. Do they even understand? Not the text part as much as the overall action of not acting like a grown up and hearing her out since he said what he needed to say. Sorry if I'm being redundant. Um, it, it's okay. It, it's okay. And, and you know, these kind of questions, I can't say what anybody specifically is thinking or doing or what they meant intentions are they aware how much are they aware i don't know all i can tell you is people that don't live the life that they want to live aren't very aware that they're doing it they don't they aren't very aware of why people that hurt others aren't very aware of how they're hurting them you have all hurt people guys and you weren't thinking of how much it's hurting that person at that time maybe right after maybe it took some time okay but I'm telling you, people that act like this aren't very aware. I get literally, I, I, and I say this before, and I've, I've gone off on rants, and I'm not going to, but I have been ghosted so much, it's insane. That just seems to be the way we end relationships today. We just ghost. We're just gone. No reason. No, I just don't answer your emails anymore and stuff like this. And it's awful. And, and I know the people that are doing it to me are nice, great people, and they're not understanding or realize how much it can hurt you, hurt your feelings, could confuse you make you cause doubt and, you know, it takes harder to grieve and stuff like this. And it's just not very respectful. Um, I, I don't know how aware they are. This guy is, you know, I'm not. My, my it, it, this is typically somebody who may have totally been manipulative, right? And just wanted this person, your sister in his life at the time or momentarily. You, you got to understand, relate. Relationships, good, healthy ones, take lots of self-awareness. I have to know who I am. 
I have to know what I can take and what I can't take, what I can accept and not accept. And a lot of people that aren't very self-aware will accept someone in their life that, uh, that has things that they really don't accept. And it could take six months or six years for a person unaware to realize this, that I can't accept this about you. Um, people that can't apologize and, and, and explain to people and be vulnerable and stuff like that. He has fear of vulnerabilities and being he's probably insecure. My guess is he doesn't understand how much it hurts her. My guess is if he wanted to hurt her and he enjoys it, he would have done it more. You know what I mean? I just, I, I don't know. And, and we've all hurt people. Like I said, think of the times you've hurt people. You probably weren't thinking about how they feel about it at the moment. Weren't using much, much empathy or sympathy or compassion. But it's the people that don't regret. People that don't care later in life. Don't give a crap. Those are people that are lacking empathy and sympathy and compassion. And you're, it's okay, Dave. Keep asking me more about this. I'm just sorry I can't tell you more. Um, the person that believes that they do know all these things, um, yeah, has a lot of false confidence. Uh, and, and, I, and I continued with this, and you did too. I, I, I'm sorry for your sister. How bad it makes you feel to see it. They lack awareness. They refuse to look at themselves. They do not like themselves as an infant, how aware they are when they're hurt your feelings. I remember I told a small child they hurt me once and they started crying. It's because they cannot look at themselves. It's too much for them. He might be aware that others believe what he has done is wrong, but he may not think what he's doing is wrong. That means no regret. I, I, you know, I, 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 can't, I don't know. You said, by the way, I signed your petition. Thank you, Dave. On what you said, that's really interesting in the examples. Make it really clear. My first thought was that's really screwed up. What they feel, not what you said. I need to think on that. If you don't mind, why do they isolate people and how? My sister kind of disappeared from our lives and she has a hard time explaining that. Because your sister gave herself up. Your sister en entered a dependent relationship with someone extremely dependent on her for all his needs. He can't take care of himself. He's not self-reliant. He's dependent on people. And the codependent relationship always has the giver and the taker. It's lopsided. It's not even. The, the takers are the taker, taker, taker. Usually not much empathy. Usually very controlling, insecure, can't be vulnerable, can't do things for themselves. And they need, need someone to sit there and emotionally comfort them and tolerate them and accept them in their life. People like him, don't, they, they don't find many people that do accept him. He doesn't accept himself. He rejects himself, but he found your sister who accepts him leaving like that is rejecting yourself. When you abandon somebody, you're rejecting yourself and the relationship you have with them and how it feels. Um, why do they isolate people? So you've got a master manipulator who's super insecure, find someone that will accept them and be in their life and do everything for them that they want and they don't want that be, to be taken away. That's prize. That's, that's prize possession. Okay, and so all codependent relationships can feel threatened by all kinds of different outside external forces, like a mom concerned about how you've been looking lately, or I'm concerned about all the fights you've been in, and I see marks on your face, and why are you always crying? Yeah, that's a threat, 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 threat to even just codependent relationship. So a relationship that may be toxic, and you're calling them a sociopath and narcissist, they'll be extremely possessive. They'll be extremely loyal, typically, sometimes. But they, they fear that people will tell them what's going on, what's wrong. They don't accept themselves. They have troubles finding someone to accept them. And then when they do, that they, they know that and they fear that their whole family will tell them how bad they are and get away from him and stuff like that. Okay. You also have a sister willing to give her entire self up to this person. She must have done this growing up in, in childhood where mom and dad and what they feel and what they want and what they need and all this stuff is more important, took the attention away from her. Maybe she's a caretaker. Maybe she took, took care of you a little bit. I don't know. Hopefully that helps. Uh, they isolate people because they want you to be all about them. They want all the attention. They also don't want you to be taken away. They don't want any external outside voices telling you, hey, this is wrong. This is sick. Get away from him. Make sense? They also don't get along with people. So they're not going to get along with your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister. They're not going to get along with your friends. They're going to eventually not like your friends. Your friends aren't going to eventually like him. There's lots of different things going on when isolating somebody like that. And, and it, it may not be uh, conscious. All subconscious. And your sister gave away. She didn't get what she needs in that relationship. Imagine if this is your sister, all the five major parts of who she is. She didn't get her emotional needs met. I guarantee it. What happened to that part? He didn't care about her. She didn't care about that part of her anymore. Depends how long she stayed.
I bet she didn't get what she wanted. I bet it felt bad and never felt better. Never got better and better. Now it feels bad. I bet that she lost all her values. Anything that she morally values is gone in that relationship. All she was left with is, is her opinion. Who cares if he valued that? Probably, probably didn't. And she, she completely compromised herself. She numbed herself. She sacrificed herself. It's, it can be very complex. Uh, Emily Merton from South Africa. Hi, Emily. My mom always enjoyed hurting me, just like my dad. She knew what she was doing, and you can't say that she was the victim. She could have done something, but she constantly told me throughout my life not to get help or talk to people. It is as much her fault as it is my dad's. I'm sorry, Emily. I'm sorry. I really am that both, they both hurt you so much. Um, anything that somebody does to another person is their fault. Anything. Everything your dad's done to you is your dad's fault. Anything your mom has done to you is her fault. And we're talking neglect. She was supposed to keep you safe. She was supposed to keep you secure. She was supposed to give you emotional attention and autonomy and, and connection. And she failed to do all those things. And it sounds like your dad did too. And they both neglected you. And that's the worst psychological abuse to do a, to a child. So they're both guilty, yes. And I don't, I don't know if you're referring to me. Like, don't say she was the victim. I'll tell you this. People who abuse people were at least once a victim. And maybe your dad also victimized her. And she also victimized you. Lots of victimization going on in the house. Right. Um, but not to take away what anything and any what anybody does to you, Emily. I'm sorry. I'm glad you're out of that. Emily's come a long way over the past months. Penny from Arizona East Valley. Hi, Penny. Thank you for answering my question a few months ago. You're welcome. I was married to a narcissistic man for 27 years. <whistles> that is a long time. I went no contact in 2017. We have been legally divorced since 2018. We have a three adult children who maintain a relationship with their father and respect my no contact relationship for the most part. During the course of our marriage, we had a few close friends. I valued the friendship with these people and couples. I recently decided to ask each of them if they were still friends with my ex. Most of them said yes. I then blocked them too. I really don't feel safe talk talking or being vulnerable with them because of the chance that they might communicate my feelings or situations or personal issues with my ex. Was the decision neurotic or strange? I felt right. It felt right and I have no regrets. I felt like I was cleaning house. How can they be my friends if they're enlisted into his narcissistic fantasy. I'd like to hear your perspective of canceling friendships with the narcissist's ex-partner. I can't cancel my adult friends because of their relationship with their father. I can't cancel my adult kids because of their relationship with their father. I know they care about my feelings and healing. I don't worry about my kids. What do you think about my decision? Penny, it doesn't matter what you do. All that matters is how you feel about it. So you know how I know it's okay? Because you said it felt right. That's how I know. I wouldn't know unless you said that. My opinion on it, who cares? Who gives a crap what my opinion is on it? You want to ask me what I do something similar? Many times have I have. All that matters is how you feel about it, Penny. You know, and th th this is where bad therapist advice comes into play too. They hate getting rid of relationships. Oh my God. Oh my God, it doesn't matter what the person does to you. Try to fix it. Tell him you're sorry. Write him a letter. Jesus Christ, some of the worst advice I've ever heard in my life. So, uh, look, Penny, you, you evaluate every friendship you have first. And where is it? Right? Do, you, uh, do, they, do they match the same values you do? A relationship period won't work. Rule number one. Unless both of you ha share the same moral values. Period. Okay? And if your emotion, are your emotional needs met in these relationships? Do you value, not the people, do you value the relationship? Do you want it to work? Do you want it to fix? Are they capable of it? There's a lot going on there, but all that really matters is how you feel about it. You know, you know, we don't want to throw away any good friendships, right? So did you have any? Were any of them good? Um, they may not know everything that your husband's ex-husband has done to you. You know what I mean? And your ex-husband ex may not display who he is to them. I don't know, but it doesn't matter, Penny. All that matters is how you feel about it, okay? If you have second thoughts, talk about it with somebody. You know, if there's somebody that you threw away and you wish you didn't reach out to them, write them a letter. You, every relationship should have terms, your terms and their terms both agreed upon. You know, hey, I'd like to be friend with you, but my, one of my terms is you can't, you know, be friends with my ex-husband. And I'm not telling you not to be friends with my ex-husband. I'm just saying if you want to be my friend, you can't be friends with him. If you want to be friends with my ex-husband, I understand. That means I cannot be friends with you. Communication will solve almost everything. 
open, vulnerable, honest, accurate, awareness, conversation, just brings everything right to the point. Here's the problem, need to fix it, can't fix it, goodbye. That's it. So, yeah, I hope that helps, Penny, and good for you, and I'm sorry that you lost a lot of friends, because that can get very, very depressing. So I hope that you have some kind of support around you. I hope you have somebody there to talk to, somebody to be a friend to. That doesn't mean we go back and get, you know, take our friends back that aren't good for us and toxic or anything like that, but it, it just realize that getting rid of people out of our lives is the worst loss in our life, losing people one way or another. It could cause more stress, but, you know, Keep doing what you're doing. Keep getting better and healthier. Focusing on yourself, how you feel about this stuff. Talk to it about somebody. Uh, Rory in Ohio. In Ohio, hi Rory. Hope you're having a great day. While in therapy together, my husband shared that he has his demons. Was this just an over exaggeration of what was really going on? Like, well, you know, I have my demons, so I really can't work on this. I'm not going to even try. I just found it such a melodramatic depiction. I have my demon sounding like Damien or the exorcist or Rosemary's baby. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. And I, I, I've heard people say this. We've all heard people say this. And maybe one, some of us have said this. I, I've never said that. Um, I don't believe in demons anyway. So I don't, I, yeah. Um, but something I can't face about myself, something that is so bad about myself. I have, you know, here's my fears. I have fears. I've got demons. And, you know, when we talk about personal demons and personal fears like this, it's really me. It's a part of me I can't face, can't look at, can't fix, can't touch, won't go there. I'll just sit there and classify this, what it is, and I'll store it away and put it away over here. Right. Um, it's interesting when people tell you, though, isn't it? Yeah. That's what I think, Rory. What do you think? Jennifer from United Kingdom. Hi, Jennifer. Why do psychopaths seem to answer questions so quickly when being interrogated? Is it because their minds are empty at the time? Hope this makes sense. It's almost as if they know what's coming when being in interrogated. Well, psychopaths are the ones that really don't get caught much. Uh, prisons are loaded with sociopaths, 70%, uh, something crazy like that, and actually a small percentage of psychopaths because they typically don't get caught. I mean, they, are, they don't have a conscience, which means they aren't aware of their feelings. They have limited feelings. I mean, it's, you know, when we're getting interrogated, any normal human beings going to be scared. They're going to be scared. They're going to have stress chemicals flowing, right? And they're going to be showing little behaviors that they can't control. And they're going to be, you know, lie if they have to lie. But a psychopath can stay calm. And a psychopath kind of always knows what's coming and the questions. And they have already planned it out and how to answer it. And they'll just answer it. And they can even pass uh, lie detector tests. Because their heart isn't going, jim, jim, jim. They're pretty scary. They can, they, some of them can be. Hope that answered your question. You know, you think of, um, you know, taking time to answer a question, fluttering my eyes, looking around, um, 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 things like this. These are all my emotions affecting me, where they're not affected by that. Sergeant Muffin Badger from California Central Valley. Hi. Is it normal to have moments of extreme loneliness and reminisce of, of the good moments? No. That would not be considered normal. <laughs> I mean, that's the way you phrased it. Normal is such a, you know, and who cares what's normal? Are we all striving to be normal? Uh, is it normal when you have a stress disorder recovering from emotional trauma? Yes. How's that? Is that better? Um, and I know that's what you're asking, but I have to, I can't. You know, when you ask it that way, I can't say it. Uh, and this after the denial and recovering from the physical damage they cause. The physical damage they cause. Interesting. This several months after it ended and I'm starting to get my stuff together, but I still get these moments. And, and I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. It, it sounds like they're less less frequent, less intense. So you're, you're getting better. Tell yourself you keep you, you will keep getting better. Um, what are you doing to get better? Always ask yourself that. Moments of extreme loneliness. Yeah. Remember the person I was saying, the uh, sister, Dave's sister, who uh, lost herself, all these things, gone. This is when we feel lonely, guys. Because we always have ourself, and if you don't, man, that, that feels really 
lonely. If you've compromised your values and numbed your feelings and never got what you needed and don't know what you want and never share your opinion or anybody values it around there, around you in your life, yeah, that's when we feel real lonely by ourselves. We're in bad company when we're by ourselves. We, we need to increase self-awareness, start showing people who we are by the decisions and the choices we make and how we treat others and what we do for ourselves, stuff like this. Um, I preach this stuff. Keep asking me more specific questions and I'll answer them for you and help you understand more. Um, or you can also uh, schedule a session with me or ask a professional that knows this stuff. Um, real, real common. Okay. We, we, we just lost somebody. That's grief, major loss. We've had trauma in this relationship. Our brains keep thinking about it and we lost ourselves. You didn't get what you need and want and felt bad and lost your sense of values. So know what your values are. Start showing them, make them principle in your life all the time. So, do, so does everybody else have to in your life too. That's when we feel the best. That's when we walk out of an extreme negative experience is feeling good about ourselves still. I promise. I didn't lose myself. I didn't treat someone bad. I, I held on to my values. And I'm going, I'm doing this to give myself what I need. And Okay. But at least it sounds like you're still, it sounds like you're on this path. You're going that direction. So uh, try not to freak out too much. A lot of us think, oh no, I, I don't know if I'm getting any better. But yeah, I am. They're they're less frequent and they're less intense, but I don't know if I'm getting better. Well, that, that means you're getting better, at least. Not to take away how intense and bad they feel now. I'm sorry, there's things we can do. I have tons of recommendations. Tons. Uh, Salema from France. Hi, Salema. If I deeply see that the narc can ruin one day of my entire life, or maybe two or three days, but that he does not have the power to bend me, mold me, that he cannot break me, and if I internalize this truth deeply, deeply in the deepest parts of my being, then there is nothing to be afraid of anymore. What do you think, David? I think that sounds great. Why don't you, all of you, pick the, you know, let's go back to our last relationship that was, you know, the worst traumatizing relationship. Think of what was the worst moment. Can you remember, can you recall the very, very worst moment you had? And out of one out of a 10, what felt the worst in our entire lives would be a 10 and what felt the very best in our lives would be a one because we're measuring the pain, the anguish, the fear, whatever it is. That day, that moment was your 10. That's your 10, okay? And you survived it. You already know what the worst time in your life is and you survived it. You have nothing to be afraid of. Nothing. You don't have to fear people. You just have to know how to protect yourself. And you don't have to do it by, by not isolating. By being a member of society and protecting yourself. That's it. That's it. And once you know that, you're fine. You don't have to be afraid of people. I liked your comment. Thank you, Salama. Pray for peace. Don't know where you're from. How are you doing? How am I doing what? <laughs> I'm doing it well. Thank you. How are you doing it? Is, I'm just being, I'm kidding. Thank you. I'm well. Thank you for asking. Is an emotionally unavailable man a narcissist? No, nope, not necessarily, but lots of narcissists are emotionally unavailable men. Narcissist. When you do that ist, narcissist, not narcissistic. When you do that narcissist, that's a personality disorder. That is a very, very specific criteria for it. Okay. And emotionally unavailable I don't think he is one of the diagnostic traits, but they have to be several of them. They have to have all of them to be, to have the disorder. Okay. Emotionally unavailable men, you're going to find all over the place. Doesn't mean they're narcissists. Doesn't even mean they're narcissistic. I mean, I guess that would be a little bit more focused on me being so reserved and quiet, very covert, covert narcissists are, can be very emotionally unavailable. Um, ask me something more specific about it, if you can. Okay, thanks. Uh, Paul says, I've had good luck with therapy two different times. Thank you for sharing that, Paul. There is hope out there. There is good help, I promise. Salema again from France. I enjoyed the questions and answers. So informative and helpful. I like your energy. Thank you. 
Thanks for answering my question about me re repeating my dad's expressions. I am mindful that I don't like these expressions anymore. They don't make me laugh anymore. So yes, I stopped using them. I feel healthier. I wish I could see that commercial you talked about. Last week I talked about a commercial and it's a progressive commercial. And Rory has the details down here. Dr. Rick on a progressive commercial. There's several of them. This one is about how not to be like your parents. And it is hilarious. It's hilarious. We're all, we, we could hate our parents and we're like them. We hated how they raised us and we raised our children kind of like them, hopefully a little better. But it's a great commercial. It's fun. You could look it up on YouTube. Progressive insurance commercial featuring Dr. Rick about becoming your parents. That's what Rick, uh, Rory told us. Thanks, Rory. And thank you, Salama. Okay, a couple more. Dale from Kanaz Comics. Hi, Dale. I hate to say, but I agree with you, all that you said. I wish that I did not. I'm attempting to tidy with small amounts of time per day. So Dale has been struggling uh, with uh, a whole house full of stuff and needs to clean and all this stuff. And uh, I'm sorry. That it sounds like it's very stressful for you, Dale. I'm really sorry. I hope that you can get some help. Okay. Um, I, I made a recommendation. You didn't say anything about it. And I'm dead serious. You may not think I'm serious, but get rid of it. Get rid of it all. Get rid of half your stuff. You don't need it. I promise. I bet. I bet. I bet I could go over there, Dale, to your house and, and find more than half your stuff you don't need, don't want, don't use. Get rid of it, Dale. If it's so hard to clean and so hard to put away and so far, just get rid of it. What could it possibly be? You only need a couple pans. You only need some silverware, a couple glasses. You know, you don't even have it. No one will even come over to your house. Your former girlfriend refused to come around for years. Jeez. And then you said, I must, other people seem to find this really easy to do. So I must assume that there is something faulty with me. Well, Dale, let's not try to say there's something faulty with us, any of us. There's something wrong with all of us. <laughs> we all have problems. Every single person has problems. Here's one of yours. And no, not everyone has the same problem. But boy, there are a lot of people that have problems like this. And a lot of this comes following after trauma in our lives. OCD, hoarding, PTSD, real common. Depression. I'm sorry, Dable. You need, if you need help, ask for help, Dale. Ask for help. I help people with stuff like this. There's people that can help you with stuff like this. Ask your neighbors for help. Ask your friends, ask somebody to help you. Why not? Ask your neighbors. That's the way neighbors used to be. Uh, Victoria Munez in Bay Area. Hi, Victoria. Thank you for answering my question. I took a peek inside my toxic family's life. Nothing's changed. They're still very toxic. Well, why would they have changed? <laughs> I have to do no contact like I did with my ex-narcissist. I guess I forgot how much pain this family can dish out. I spent last night curled up in a ball crying. I just had to feel the pain all over again so I wouldn't go back. I can't keep moving forward if I keep looking back. I wish it was different. Heal from this, Victoria. Look back enough until you're at least healed from this, Victoria. Don't ignore it. It really is true. It really happened. It really feels bad. And it's a lot of loss to say goodbye to our family. We need support. We need help. We need understanding, compassion. We need to talk. I hope you have that support, Victoria. These are major, major life decisions. That's it, guys. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your beautiful questions. Anybody that uh, wants to see and hear more about this, you know, go read the comments. They're really wonderful. People share a bunch of stuff. It's safe down there. And you guys really helped this video out, my channel out. It's struggling lately because I'm being banned from YouTube, like, immensely. And um, it's struggling. The videos are struggling. So I can really use all your support. You can vote up or down, comment down below, say hi, um, share this somewhere else, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks, guys. And if you could, sign the petition. It's right down below in the comments. It'll be everywhere. Change.org forward slash stop bullies. Thank you, all of you, very, very much. And make sure that you always love yourself first. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.